Menu. Web aim. Keyboard. Web aim. Keyboard shortcuts for NVDA Internet Explorer. Welcome to this webinar on non-visual desktop access, NVDA. I'm going to run you through some of the basics about what NVDA is, what it does, and some of the basic keystrokes and commands, and trying try to give you some concepts of, of how it works. So the website that I'm on right now is the Web AIM site that lists all the NVDA keyboard shortcuts. I wanted to start here because this is a very useful site. If you are working with someone who is used to using JAWS, and they say, you know, I, I know JAWS, but I don't know NVDA, that's a pretty common thing uh, that, that folks might uh, say. But NVDA and JAWS are not that different from one another. There are very few keystrokes that are significantly different. Um, of course, when, when they are, they make a difference. And I'll maybe point out a couple of the, the more common ones on that. But this is a, a great resource for uh, folks who need to kind of brush up and, and maybe uh, see the differences and, and kind of if they're working on converting from JAWS to NVDA. And you might want to know why would somebody convert from JAWS to NVDA. JAWS is a program that has been around for a very long time. It's uh, job access with speech for Windows been around since the early days of Windows and so folks may have kind of grown up on that program. It isn't the cheapest program in the world. It is $125 I think a year for uh, individual non-business license and then license, business licensing is more expensive. NVDA is free and uh, available open source and so is getting constant uh, work and upgrades and it's also because it's newer it's a much lighter weight software it doesn't have kind of years and years and years of uh, programming kind of baggage in it so you'll notice if you install NVDA or have to do an update on NVDA it will happen very very quickly because it is a more agile piece of software that way so that being said, I'm going to talk about probably the first thing that a person needs to do when loading up NVDA. So if you want to start NVDA on the computer, there might be a desktop icon for it. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how your systems there are going to be set up, but it, it could be we uh, run it through the uh, start menu as well. You can always uh, do the old fashioned way if you hit Windows R. Run dialog, type the name of a program, folder, document, or internet resource, and Windows will open it for you. And I can okay. type combo box collapsed. Edit all dough. Type Select NVDA, it. and were it not already running, I could just hit enter and NVDA would start running. But since I'm running NVDA already, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the caps lock key with the letter N. NVDA menu. To open up the NVDA menu. And this is where you can change settings and do different things. Preferences sub menu key. Tools sub menu team. Preferences. I'm going to go to preferences and I'm going to go into settings because I want to show you, talk about the voices here. Right now, I've got it set to good voice because NVDA, general, normal configuration, dialogue. I had to get my webinar started voice. and everything like general that. One of 11. Okay. So. Speech 2 of 11. Can I go arrow down to speech, that second item in that box Synthesizer there? Synthesizer hit the tab grouping. key Only alt -line, alt to move from Windows one control one to another. Voices. Change. Button Alt H. And I'm going to go ahead and change the synthesizer Press. here. Select synthesizer dialog. Synthesizer. Combo box windows. One core voices. Collab. Microsoft speech API. eSpeak NG. I'm going to switch it back to the eSpeak engine, which is the default. When you install NVDA, eSpeak is the default setting. I'm going to give you a listen to what that sounds like. NVDA, speech, normal configuration, dialogue, synthesizer grouping, synthesizer edit read only, multi line alt S, e speak NG. So, unless you're a really big fan of British robots, this is not going to be a great synthesizer. That's the one that comes uh, out of the box. So, most people change it over to something like what I had. So, I'm going to go ahead and change this back, and this is how you would uh, do this. Oops. Button alt H. Select synthesizer dialog, synthesizer, combo box, e speak NG collapsed, alt S. Microsoft speech API version 5, Windows 1 core voices. 
I'm gonna go with the Windows One Core Voices because it has Microsoft Mark. NVDA speech normal configuration dial change voice combo box Microsoft Mark collapsed all V. And there's Microsoft David and another one on there too that are both uh, a whole heck of a lot better than the British robot. So um, a lot of times that you load NVDA or you get NVDA going, and if it, that's the first thing that you would do. Now, if you've got preferences enabled, um, you know, it'll uh, remember where you were coming back in. I don't know how that would happen on the thin clients, though, to tell you the truth. So that might be a thing that they would have to do uh, uh, on a regular basis, just depending on whether those kind of settings are saved or not. Great. Slider 91 Altar. Okay, and this is where you can change the rate of speech. You might think that what it's talking at right now is a little challenging to understand because it's reading a lot of uh, extra information around uh, the hotkeys that can be pressed and things like that. So what it just said there was a rate alt plus R. It's telling me that R is the underlined letter that I can hit alt R and it would bump me right here if I uh, want to do, navigate in that way. So, uh, but actually it's a lot slower than what I would prefer. 90, 89, no, 95, no. Pitch, slider 19, rate, slider 100, alt R. Okay. 90, 99, 100. 99, one, pitch, slider 19, alt P. Yeah, um, that's the unfortunate thing about these voices is they only go so far and they don't go particularly fast. Um, Volume, slider 100, alto. You can change pitch. Automatic language switching, when supported, checkbox checked. Um, so if you're going into web pages with different uh, languages on them, that would change the uh, accent. Automatic dialect switching, when supported, checkbox not checked. Punctuation symbol level, combo box none collapsed, alto. Trust voices language when processing characters and symbols, checkbox checked. Include Unicode consortium, capital pitch change percentage edit. Some of this gets Select really 30. into the weeds. Say cap before capitals, checkbox checked, alt C. Uh, this might be a big one if somebody has some hearing loss. Sometimes hearing the pitch change, um, pitch change will indicate a capital letter. And uh, if you have a, any hearing loss, you might not be able to detect that. So you can have it say cap instead of doing a pitch change. Beep. Use spelling functionality if supported. Checkbox checked. Alt F. Beep for capitals. Checkbox not checked. Alt B. Or you can have it beep. Use spelling. OK button. So I'm going to hit OK to get out of here and save my settings. Web aim. Keyboard shortcuts for NVDA Internet Explorer. Okay, so we're going to go uh, back to our uh, web aim page here. So that uh, that's how you change the uh, the voices. There's other things that you can change in the settings too. I'm going to go and find uh, NVDA menu. Preferences sub menu tools vocal helps up configuration revert to save reset configuration save configuration donate D exit X preferences sub menu P settings. Speech dictionary sub menu D settings. Go S. back into settings here. NVDA, general normal configuration dialogue language requires restart to fully take save configuration on exit show exit option play sounds when start logging level automatically start NVDA after I log on to Windows checkbox checked all day. Okay, and if your the uh, system allows that, that's a nice thing to have. So the next per time the person comes in, it would just automatically uh, if there is a login, um, they could just it would boot right up for them. Use NVDA on the Windows logon screen. Requires administrator privileges. Checkbox checked. Uh, that's also ideal. Use currently saved settings on the log. Automatically check for updates to NVDA. Checkbox checked. All view. That's also very helpful to keep that checked. Notify for pending update on startup. Checkbox checked. All P. Allow the NVDA project to gather NVDA usage statistic. OK button. Cancel. Apply button. Categories. List. Speech 2 of 11. Braille 3 of 11. Keyboard 4 of 11. Mouse 5 of 11. Review cursor 6 of 11. Input composition 7 of 11. Object presentation 8 of 11. Browse mode 9 of 11. Document formatting 10 of 11. Windows 10 OCR 11 of 11. Okay, so there's a lot of different uh, options and settings in here, and I won't take the time to go through them all. And you, you probably won't mess with most of this stuff unless you have a pro user. Um, I was hoping to get into the uh, uh, one of the settings that shows up on initial setup or initial startup, um, which I've uh, disabled that window on this computer, but it'll pop up and it'll say, do you want to use the caps lock key as your NVDA key? And most people will want to do that so that they can have the caps key be the uh, key that does uh, 
used in, in combination with different keys, other keys to perform tasks. Otherwise, by default, it's going to be set to the insert key. And depending on what kind of keyboard you have, that can be more or less useful. Uh, caps lock, using the caps lock key is often considered to be the laptop mode, but a lot of people will use a desktop in that same mode. So um, some of the keystrokes that you would see on this list are going to say NVDA key plus, uh, you know, like NVDA key plus right arrow or NV down arrow or whatnot. To, and that's, um, you know, because that is something that's user definable, that's how they, why they word it that way. So by default, it is an insert key, but you can set it to be the, the caps lock key as well. So just to kind of give you an example of about how, uh, how the screen reader works. So I'm gonna hit the down arrow here. Oops, I don't know. One. Meeting controls, row one, column two. More drop. Web aim. Keep. Zoom pro account, row one, column three. Web aim. Keep. Web aim. Keyboard shortcuts for NVDA Internet Explorer. And if you're wondering how I'm doing that switching there, I'm using Alt Tab and Alt Shift Tab to move through open windows. That's a Windows key. That doesn't have anything to do with NVDA. That's just kind of a, a, a little bit of a good life hack. If you don't know that on a Windows computer, that's a really fast way to switch between things. Uh, so that's one of those kind of built-in Windows functions that uh, screen reader users will will benefit from, but everybody can use. Okay, I'm gonna hit Control Home to go to the top of the page. Hopefully. Address and search using Google Edit all key. Okay, so somehow ended up in the address bar. Search using Google Edit. Favorites and tools bar toolbar. I'll try and get out of Web aim. Keyboard shortcuts for NVDA document. Oh okay. below. List with one items German link. Okay. So one thing I'm going to uh, mention here, a uh, keystroke that is very, very useful is the control key. Uh, if the NVDA is jabbering away too much, you can hit the control key to uh, make it stop talking. So that's a handy tip to have. Um, since I'm on a web page here, I'm going to talk a little bit about web navigation. Now, when sometimes folks who are not really good screen reader users or maybe not um, beginners will do is they'll just hit the down arrow and read the whole page with the down arrow. Out of list heading level two related resources. List with one items link using NVDA to evaluate web accessibility. Out of list content info landmark 2019 web aim. Center for persons with disabilities. Utah State University. 6807, Logan, Utah, 8432 okay. I'm not really getting to where I want to be with this. I'm just kind of going one item at a time. And that's a very, very slow way to read a web page. And if I'm trying to look up some keystrokes or things like that, it's going to take me a really long time to get where I need to go. So a couple of handy tricks to get where you need to go on a website. Um, I'm a big fan of the find command. You might think, um, be thinking about control F as find and, and that find box that pops up. There's a different one that is built into NVDA. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit caps lock, control and F. Find dialog. Type the text you wish to find edit. Now Select say I'm looking for commands about tables. I wanna know how to navigate tables together better. I can never remember the commands for tables. So for some reason I have to look them up quite a bit. So this is one I'm gonna put in. So I'm just gonna type in the word table. Selection removed. Webbing. Keep error dialog text table not found. Okay button. Well, that's disappointing. Webbing. Keyboard shortcuts for NVDA. I maybe need to be at the top of the page. Banner landmark links skip to main content. That might help me out a little bit here. I hit Control Home to go to the top of the page. Control End will take you to the bottom of the page as well. Those are built-in Windows things, not screen readers uh, specific, so they'll work anywhere. And I'm gonna try that search again. Find dialog. Type the text you wish to find edit. Selected table. Okay, since table was my last search, it's already there. Web aim. Main landmark navigation landmark list with eight items link tables. Link forms. Okay, so there's a link there link tables. that I could use to skip down to that part of the document. So I'm going to hit enter. You hit enter to click on a link when that link is in focus. Link forms. Link links. Except in page links never seem to work very well. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go back find to dialogue. find dialogue. Out of list heading level two tables. 
Right. And that's going to find me the less the next occurrence of the tables. So um, you may or may not have heard this, but it was saying table with five rows and two columns. Row five description column two list of command column one I description column row four description column two list quick key headings and lists heading level two tables heading level two. So tables heading level two. And what I was doing there is I was hitting the letter H and that was moving me from one heading to another. That is a huge command on web pages. Just be, um, being able to hit the letter H. That's one that's both JAWS and NVDA. Um, T will take you to the next table. This is called single letter navigation. And this is available um, to be able to browse websites faster. So if I hit uh, the down arrow, Table with six rows and two columns, row one, column one, command. So it's a table with six rows and two columns. And so basically what it's doing is giving me some descriptive information, descriptive information about the table itself. Column two, description. Row two, command, column one, T. Description, column two, table, quick. Row three, command, column one, control, alt. Description, column two, cell to right. Row four, command, column one, control, alt. Description, column two, cell to left. Okay, so. Row five, command, column one, control, alt. Now I've learned that I can use control and alt and the arrow keys to be able to navigate in the table. So instead of hitting the down arrow to go to the next thing, next thing, next thing. Row six, control, alt. Edge of table, control, alt. Row five, control, alt. Row four, control, alt. Description, column two, cell to left. File sub menu, alt F. Oops. File sub menu, alt F. You don't want to hold what down the alt key friend. too often. If you hold down the alt key, it'll take you to the menu. File sub menu alt F. And then see so you hit escape to get out of that. File sub menu alt F. Escape key is your friend. A lot of times if something pops up or you get something in the the when I was teaching, the thing I would most likely tell people is try escape first. Usually escape will solve uh, the escape key will solve a lot of your problems. So I talked about uh, the H for headings. Another uh, really, really key web-based command is going to be F for forms. Content info landmark website address edit. Wave button. No next form field. Hmm. No next form field. Figures. Website address edit. OK. So I do not have enough form uh, access here. Um, go ahead and just go over. No more text after a block of link. Internet Explorer. HTTPS. Web aim, more resources, shortcuts, and the Internet Explorer. Open up a new file. Keyboard shortcuts hit for control NVDA Internet Explorer. N to get a new window. I'm going to hit Alt D. Address and search using Google Edit Alt D. Go to the address Select bar. Select HTTPS. Web aim, more resources, shortcuts, and the. And I am going to go to. IND Iowa Gov selected instead. And you're blind to Iowa Gov. It's not Selection removed. Oh. Iowa Department for the Blind. Iowa Department for the Blind. There we go. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the letter F here and see what comes up for form fields. Search this site. Edit. So it's going to go into search this site. Edit. When F for form fields, that's going to be anything that is a control on the web page. That could be a uh, edit field that could be a checkbox, it could be a radio button, it could be a button that you press, anything like that. F will go to the next occurrence of any type of those things. If I'd wanted to just look for an edit field specifically, I could hit the letter E. No next edit field. There isn't one. Um, if I wanted to go ahead and look for a button on this page, search button, it would take me uh, right there to the search button. So. You know, E for edit fields, B for button. Uh, the uh, checkbox is actually X. No next checkbox. There's no checkboxes. And one more command that I would say that's really, really useful um, beyond, you know, remembering our H for headings is N. Primary tasks heading level two. It's going to skip me past everything that is a link to the first block of non linked text, text that is not a link, plain text, essentially body text, um, however you want to look at it. So um, if I wanted to look for a link, however, list with two items, printer friendly. I'm sorry, I hit alpha friend. list. Um, so you could either look for uh, send to a friend link, list with two items, printer friendly version link. 
Yeah. Send to a friend link. List with two items, printer friendly version link. Sorry, so um, I can hit V to go see what visited links I've gone to. No next visited link. Send to a friend link. Uh, and then U for an unvisited link. Hit control home Not to go to the list. top of the page again. So those, that's a lot of basic web navigation. If you can put those commands together, you can get through a website pretty quickly. Between that control, caps lock F for find, um, the, uh, the headings, the form fields, the different uh, individual form field uh, types, T, T for tables, and for non-linked text, you can do a, a, a pretty darn efficient job of uh, navigating a website using those that set of commands. There's a lot of other additional commands out there, but um, and those are all for the except with the exception of the control caps lock F, the same with JAWS. So I'm just going to throw in one more that some folks still uh, continue like to like to use. Elements list dialog. Tree view. Level zero Iowa got one of 99. Um, insert F7, insert with the F7 key or caps lock F7, um, will bring up this dialog box, which is actually kind of uh, handy. It'll give you everything in a list form. Services two of 99 level zero. Agencies three of 99 level. Filter by, edit all key. Activate button all day. Move to button all down. Cancel button. So you can either move to or activate, um, and you can pick you know, a, a link out from that list or an element out from that list. So uh, a lot of people would like to continue, um, will use that to navigate, because that's kind of, that used to be the best way to do it um, a long time ago, and it still has its uh, value as well. So that's another command that folks might be uh, kind of used Iowa to. Iowa Department for the Blind Iowa Department. So I'm going to go over and talk a little bit about text editing. Actually, I'll give you one more uh, piece of information. Search this site. Edit. Now, if I actually want to type something in this box, I wanted to hit the space bar in order to put me into the mode where I can type something in that box. Because right now, I'm kind of, it wasn't considered what was in uh, browse mode. I'm basically kind of floating over the top of the page. But to actually interact with a text field like this, I do need to hit the space bar to um, bring myself into the, the mode where you can type things in. So. Search button. Search this site. Edit, enter the terms you wish to search for. Selected Braille. OK. So um, search button. Link skip to main content. Link search. Search button. OK, so you're going to, there's some little sounds effects that happen there. Let's get the click to go into the uh, editing mode and the boop to go out of it. So I just wanted to play those for you and point that out again. Um, that that's, you get that auditory feedback about whether or not you're going in, in and out of that mode. So I'm going to hit enter on this button to perform the search. Search Iowa Department for the Blind. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead but, and go back over to a, uh, I'm going to use just a plain notepad file here. Web aim, meaning control, Zoom Pro account, untitled notepad, wrote, untitled notepad, text editor, edit multi-line. I started making some notes of the uh, keystrokes that I wanted to make sure to point out to you. Um, I hit Control N to go to the bottom of the document. I just want to show you a little bit of how uh, it, text input sounds and, and looks and feels. So, Use. so I you're going to notice it's going to say things after I hit the space bar after a word, it's going to pronounce a word. Control. OK, so that is um, reading word by word. So you, you can set it to read each individual character as you type, or you can have it read uh, only after you hit the space bar with a word, or you can have it do both. Um, kind of depends on what kind of typing feedback uh, people want to have. So um, 
I'm going to hit the backspace key and kind of start getting rid of the word control. Space, L, O, R, R, space, R. Yeah, so it's telling me the things that I back over. T, N, O, C. So now I'm going to put the cursor essentially on the letter C, and I'm going to hit the, del or the, the delete key. And now it's saying O because it's on the letter O. It deleted the C and is now on the O. Blank. O. Space. O. So now I all I have is an O. So that will sometimes confuse people, um, particularly maybe a new person. And if um, you know, if you, if you have somebody coming in the workforce center who's uh, you may be struggling with that, that might be an indication that they would want to you know, maybe get some services and get some more technology training. Um, but that is a thing that can kind of be confusing to people is that, you know, when you hit the, what it, what it's saying and that how that indicates the cursor position, because it does take a little bit to get used to. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. You, user selected. I hit, um, home to bring my cursor to the beginning of the line. If you hit home just by itself, it'll bring the cursor to the beginning of the line. Then hit um, shift end so that I would take the cursor to the end of the line, but also be selecting at the same time so that I would basically select the entire contents of the line. Blank. And so, so I just uh, hit the delete key to make it go away. So Control. Um, control plus X. C. Control X selected. I'm going to go ahead and select that again. Hit Control X. Selection removed. So it's going to say selection removed, but I actually cut the text um, by hitting Control X, and I'm going to paste it with Control. I'm going to hold down the Control key and hit the letter V. Blank. Control X. So now it's back. Um, if I want to read that for that whole line of text there. Blank. Control X, bottom, control X, blank, blank. Make NVDA stop talking control key. I'm hitting the up and down arrows to make NVDA stop talking control key. Move from line to line and then it reads the line, the full line that it's on. If I want to go ahead and just read one word at a time, I'm going to hold down the control key and hit the right arrow. NVDA, stop talking. If I want to go back to the previous word, I'll hit control left arrow. Stop, NVDA. Make. So, and those are all basic Windows commands too, but that's how you kind of move through and edit text. Um, you copying uh, would also then be Control plus C if you want to copy rather than cut and paste. Um, those basic keyboard commands would really come into play if you're, uh, you know, working on a resume or whatnot that you know needing to move information around, make corrections, things like that. Uh, so yeah, and then, you know, obviously you'd be selecting text in the same way to do uh, different formatting changes as well. Um, there are built-in kind of keyboard commands within Microsoft Word or um, pretty much most document editors seem to have, you know, Control E for center, Control L for left align, and Control R for right align. If you want to bold something, it's Control B, and if you would like to underline, it's Control U. Um, so there's, there's a lot of kind of built-in keyboard shortcuts for doing a lot of the formatting things as well. Um, and so basically what NVDA is doing is kind of a, just using, giving you the, the verbal feedback for what is happening on the screen. So I hope this gives you a good uh, kind of starting point to kind of understand what NVDA is and how it works. So it's really kind of a basic overview. Uh, you know, the, the, the short thing is, answer is that it is basically, you know, giving you verbal feedback of what is on the screen and also giving you a kind of an additional level of functionality about the ways that you can move the cursor and read different parts of the screen. So if you have additional questions, you know, feel free to contact us at the Iowa Department for the Blind, reach out to any of the rehab counselors you may know in the local offices, any uh, text, but they'll be happy to, you know, get you connected with a tech specialist or a, a VRT who can maybe answer some of your questions.
about how MBDA works and um, you know, maybe if you have a, a referral for someone that's uh, come in that maybe needs a little uh, more tech, you know, assistance and things like that, you know, please reach out to to us and we'd uh, really like to be able to uh, assist in that. So thanks for, for your time and attention today and uh, thanks. Search Iowa Department for the blind web meeting controls row two column one. Zoom Pro account row two column two. Meeting controls, rot meeting controls window. More drop down buttons. Menu. Chat select. Closed cap. Invite selected. Pause recording selected. Stop recording selected.